Now we saw about discrete frequency distribution in one of the previous videos. In case you haven't, you can go through it. And if I just have to recall, it looked something like this table, wherein you had particular number of variables or the observations as they are called. You had their frequency and then you counted their frequency to prepare a discrete frequency distribution table. Now, what happens is, in certain cases, that, you know, if the number of observations or the variables are very large, what we saw here was that the variables were only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So the number of variables were not very large. But let's say, if you take another example, okay? Which is, mm, let's take the marks of 20 students in board examination. And this is given in percentages. Right? So let's say the marks of the 20 student was as under. Okay, so you've got the marks of 20 students in terms of percentages in their board examination. Now, if you were to draw a discrete frequency distribution for this, the number of variables which are there are going to be very large because all these numbers are different and, I mean, most of them are different. There are hardly any repeating numbers which are there and the difference is also very large. So in order to come, overcome through this situation, what do we do? We try to arrange numbers within certain defined parameters. And these defined parameters normally for statistical purpose we call them as class or groups. Now if you broadly see, the largest number amongst these is 94. Okay, and the smallest by far is 40. So we try to form various classes or groups. Class might be a difficult thing for you to understand. Try to understand it by way of groups. So we say, okay, 40 is the smallest number. So we form one group of 40 to 50. So we call this as class. Let me draw a table for you as well. Then I form another class between 50 and 60, 60 and 70, 70 and 80, 80 and 90, and 90 and 100. So instead of putting all these numbers independently, if I would start doing it, just assume, okay, the first one would have been 40, which is the smallest one, then 60, then 62, 64, 66, okay, 73, 74, and so on. So there will be a hell number of variables which would have been there. Instead of doing this, I formed a class wherein I tried to group these numbers into different sets. Okay? So these groups or classes as they are called, are available. Then I form the tally bars. Again, 
this time as you form the tally bars what do you do you look at a particular number let's say it is 60 so where does 60 fits in well if you see 60 comes here also and 60 is lying here also right now for the purpose of this calculation the way it is taken is okay let me explain this to you so when you take a particular class okay let's say for example you take 40 to 50 then only the numbers which start with the first part which is known as the lower class okay or lower limit this is included and this is excluded right so let's say when you consider 60 60 starts here and it is also there in the end here but you will exclude 60 from here and include it here so you put in one tally mark let me use a different color for 60 knock it off 64 64 lies where it lies here again Now let's take the third one, 74. This will fall here. So we put in one, 62 here, 78 again, 66, 80. So is it coming here? No, because we don't count the upper limit as I told you in this case. So we include 80 here, 90. Similarly, 90 will not come here, here. 92, yes, 94, yeah, 62, 62, 70, 1, 2, 3, 4, so we cross this, 73, 77, both of them come here, 40, yes, 86, 88, both fall in this class interval, 90, again, goes to the bottom one, 79, yes, here, 415, 81, 87. 81, 87. Right? So you've got one tally bar here. So your frequency, you've got 0 here. You've got 4 here. Sorry, not 4. Because there's a cross here. It's actually what? 5. Again, this is 5 here. This is 5 here. And this is 4 here. So if you sum total them, they will get 20, which is the total one. So again, as I told you, in a continuous frequency distribution, okay, or a grouped frequency distribution as it is called, you prepare the classes, mark the tally bars which have to fall within those classes, exclude the outer limit if nothing is given, okay, and there are some variations here which I will be telling you later. Mark the tally bars, find out the frequency, do the sum. Right?